Hi, Denise Matteau here, your Cheap Phone Ninja, broadcasting on the Visions of, Mer Visions of Mercy channel. I'm continuing in this little series about um, murders, in this case, of young women. Um, <clears throat> I, in video number 11 in this channel, I was speaking of the trial of the killer of Emmett Sanguin. Emmett Sanguin is the criminal justice uh, grad student from John Jay College of Criminal Justice who was murdered in New York in 2006. There was a trial and a conviction of the killer, who was indeed the killer, in 2009. <clears throat> and I read some remarks in a New York Post article that was published on May 12th, 2009, in which the attorney for the defense blamed the bar owner instead of the convicted bouncer for the murder, claiming that he was responsible. The New York Post did not go any further into that in that particular article, but the next day published this article called, let's see if I can find it, Scared Bar Boss Lied. Now this was written by a different reporter. Alex Ginsberg wrote the article about the trial. This article is written by Jane McIntosh. May 13th, 2009, New York Post. <clears throat> the Scion of a big apple bar owning family made infamous in the notorious 1986 preppy murder case admitted yesterday he flat out lied to cops who were probing the 2006 murder of Emmett Sanguin after she was seen at his bar. I could just imagine the repercussions it would set off. Lawsuits, police, and bad press. Danny Dorian testified at the murder trial. If I pretend that it didn't happen, maybe it wouldn't be true. I just didn't believe it was true. I guess UMass didn't believe in certain students in 2010 and 2013 being murdered there. Lying is a way of life for the elite. Dorian admitted he didn't tell cops. He ordered Little John, then that was the last name of the bouncer who was convicted, to escort Emmett Sankian out of the bar at closing time. So he did, in fact, order the killer to accompany this drunken young woman out of the bar at closing. He, had, he said he didn't want to relive the scrutiny the family experienced after Levin's murder in 1986. So they have experience in this. Dorian initially told cops he didn't remember seeing her at the falls, that that's the name of the bar, on the night of her February murder. Frankly, I didn't want to get involved, he added. Looking puffy-faced and ill at ease on the stand, Dorian testified that he only decided to come clean a week later after cops poured over the bar seeking evidence for 12 hours. Dorian called his father and asked how to handle it. It looks like there's a situation down at the falls and it looks pretty serious. A young lady was murdered and I think the police should look at my doorman because they would be the last people to see her alive, he told his father, Jack Dorian. But even after his father and his brother-in-law, Anthony Carbonetti, 
who was chief of staff under Mayor Rudy Giuliani. See, this is the situation you have, just as in my daughter's death. My brother was chairman of the Wyndham Commission in Vermont. He's retired now, but he's very close to Howard Dean. My family can get away with murder. And my family felt threatened because I didn't cooperate with certain things that their political friends in Massachusetts wanted me to do. I wouldn't look the other way. I wouldn't get involved. I didn't intend to speak up. I didn't even really understand what was going on. I knew it was wrong and I didn't want any part of it with moving money, political money. And I had a nephew who got away with murder in 1981. The elite are experienced at this and lying is a way of life. And when a member of the elite or somebody who works for, is employed by, or is somehow a customer in the bar owned by the elite, isn't part of that lying culture. They just kill them and they get away with it. Back to the New York Post. But even after his father and his brother-in-law, who was chief of staff under Mayor Giuliani, drove him to police headquarters to meet with detectives so the detectives could see who he was related to and be fully aware of it, not that they didn't know, Danny Dorian said he still wasn't entirely forthcoming. I told them certain things and I left certain things out. I didn't want to get any more involved, he said. Sanguian's mother, Maureen, and sister, Alejandra, eyed Dorian as he heartlessly told how he tried to wriggle out of any responsibility for the 24-year-old student's death. Dorian said he knew very little about little John's background when he hired him, and he didn't care. He paid him a hundred dollars a shift. I thought he was in law enforcement. My understanding was that him and another bouncer would go after people who had subpoenas against them. They'd go out and hunt down people in trouble with the law. So he knew he had hunters, he had predators. He deliberately hired the predators. Again, we're looking at the culture of the elite. Uh, I won't go into the details of what that monster did to young Emmett. Well, Dorian says he is now unemployed and lives off his father's wealth. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, it's interesting. I need to do a video on how the elite uses psychotherapy in their culture. Um, lying is considered honorable, intelligent behavior by the elite. I had an interesting uh, conversation, several interesting conversations, with a New York therapist who was definitely working for the elite because he was working for my family. And I had achieved the dubious honor or victory of having my ex-husband ordered 
into therapy. But in order to do this, the whole family had to go into therapy, which was fine. But what was interesting was that during the months that I went to the therapist, um, I enrolled in a writing project that the clinic was sponsoring. And it was very interesting. There were about half a dozen of us in that project. And it, we, we were writing fiction. And there was something about one of my characters. I don't even really remember the story I wrote. But one of my characters was being brutally honest in the conversation. Now this was a th psychotherapy connected writing class. It wasn't just any writing class. Okay, so the leader was one of the people trained as a psychologist. Although I found out later he had no degree in psychology and he was basically hired on because he was a friend of the psychologist who ran the clinic. And his buddy needed a job, so he said, yeah, you know, teach a writing class for the nutcases. But what was interesting was that man began to criticize my story on the basis of a weird obsession with being honest. And he characterized it as if I came from some bizarre, primitive Native American culture, which struck me right across the face because as a person of French-Canadian descent in New England, the French-Canadians and the Native American cultures are highly intermixed. And honesty, brutal, complete and total honesty, is characteristic of both cultures. And I defended that and, in fact, pointed out to the, the class teacher what he had just said to me was, well, it was not only highly offensive, but it was also actually a compliment that I was being true to my heritage. And what was interesting was that teacher became so angry that he spoke to the clinician about it, the one who was in charge of the family therapy, who asked me what I had said. And apparently, because I stood up to this man, and I said something about Jewish culture because the man was Jewish. And I said, you know, if I said anything about Jewish culture, you'd feel the same way. I said, and I don't understand. Maybe in your culture, lying is part of what you do. But it's not part of what we do, and I won't change it. Well, that became listed as a psychopathic level of anti-Semitism. And at that time, I was not anti-Semitic. I didn't understand, in fact, the cultural meaning of lies. And really, it was the New York elite culture of lying. And the psychotherapists who come out of that culture promote lying. Lies, deceits, and murders. The culture of the American elite. And read that article that I just read to you. I'm going to put the link in the description, the New York Post. It wasn't just a chance accusation that a desperate defense attorney made about her client's boss being partly responsible for the murder of Emmett Sanguian. He was extremely responsible for the murder of Emmett Sanguian. And he and his family for them, it was just business as usual. Denise Matteau, Visions of Mercy. And please remember, our only way to fight all of this is prayer. We can speak out. We can cry for justice. We can cry for prosecution, investigation, and justice. But ultimately, prayer is the only thing that will get us through. God have mercy on us all. Over and out.